Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media I am Dr Nick Nickam I am a cardiologist from Houston Texas Let us learn something about right heart pressures or commonly known as swan gans pressures and waveforms so let's begin The A wave represents the right atrial contraction as the right atrial contraction reaches a peak and slowly relaxes we see a slight descend in the waveform and following that we have a slight positive deflection known as the c wave which is corresponding to the tricuspid valve closure the c wave is followed by a gradual descend known as the x descend which represents the continued relaxation of the right atrium the x descend also happens during the right ventricular systole this is followed by a gradual filling of the right atrium by the blood returning from the upper and lower parts of the body which represents the v wave the v wave reaches the peak just before the tricuspid valve opens with the opening of the tricuspid valve there is movement of the blood into the right ventricle which gradually empties the right atrium leading to the y descent then there is equalization of pressure in the right atrium and the right ventricle which represents this uh, diastasis in summary the right atrial pressure has two main positive deflections namely the a wave and the v wave and two negative deflections the x descent and the y descent typically the right atrial pressure a wave ranges between 2.5 to 7 mm of mercury and similarly the v wave varies between 2 and 7.5 mm of uh, the mean right atrial pressure is uh, a representation of both the a and v waves it generally varies between 2 to 5 mm of mercury here is a diagrammatic representation of the a c x descent v and y descent with reference to how the right atrium looks with the atrial contraction there is movement of the blood into the right ventricle as a result it produces a positive deflection and the y positive deflection due is due to the filling of the right atrium fr- with the blood returning from the upper and lower parts of the body and similarly the cycle repeats let's look at the right ventricular pressures corresponding to the rapid filling of the ventricle we have a positive deflection in the right ventricle that is during diastole which causes this positive deflection when the pressure between the right atrium and the right ventricle becomes normalized we see a period of diastasis or normalization of right and right atrial and right ventricular pressures immediately before the right ventricular contraction we have the right atrial contraction which causes this atrial deflection or the a wave and this is followed by a rapid rise in the right ventricular pressure with the right ventricular contraction that causes a steep uh, increase in pressure if you look at the pulmonic valve pressure also simultaneously as the tricus as the right ventricular pressure rises above the pulmonic diastolic pressure the right ventricle pumps blood into the pulmonary artery and reaches a peak as the ventricle begins to relax the pulmonic valve closes 
the pulmonic valve closes and there is a gradual, there is a sudden decline in the right ventricular pressure. And as it reaches below the baseline, again, there is a opening of the tricuspid valve with rapid filling of the right ventricle and the cycle continues. And if you look at the pulmonary artery pressure, as the right ventricular pressure increases above the diastolic pulmonary pressure, the pulmonic valve opens and that causes a, a sudden positive deflection in the pulmonary artery. And this waveform is very similar to your arterial pressure you commonly see on the intensive care unit monitors. It has a steep rise in pressure followed by a peak and there is a sudden decline as the right ventricle begins to relax. That leads to a notch which is known as the incisura that represents the closing of the pulmonic valve and after that as the blood moves forward through the pulmonary circulation there's a gradual decline in the pulmonary artery pressure and it reaches the diastolic phase and again the systolic phase begins. Next let's look at pulmonary capillary wedge pressure which is an indirect reflection of the left atrial pressure. If you are familiar with the Swan-Gans catheter replacement, we generally inflate the balloon which uh, blocks the pulmonary artery and reflects the pressure from the left atrium. This is an indirect measurement of the left atrial pressure which is similar to the right atrial pressure uh, so we see the positive A and V wave deflections. It is not common to see the C wave deflection because of some damping since the pressure has to be transmitted through the, the pulmonary capillary system. So basically in a pulmonary capillary wedge or left atrial indirect uh, waveform, we see a A wave representing the left atrial contraction and the V wave representing the venous return. Also, since this pressure has to travel through the capillaries, there is generally a time delay of the atrial contraction with reference to the surface electrocardiogram P waves. Here's the P wave deflection and as you can see there is a delay, time delay due to the time taken for the pressure to travel from the left atrium through the capillaries to the tip of the Swan-Gans catheter. Another important aspect we need to keep in mind when we are measuring the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. When we inflate the balloon, we continue to push air until we see a beautiful deflection of the waveforms representing the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. If we see a muted line, that means the pressure is damped. In such situations, we have to deflate the balloon and just gradually push air until we see uh, very nice A and V waves in the pulmonary capillary wedge uh, tracing. One more important thing about the uh, pulmonary capillary wedge waveform is the respiratory variation as we can see here. During inhalation, the pressure waveform dips and during exhalation, the pressure waveform goes up and the computer automatically calculates the average of these waveforms to get the mean left atrial pressure or the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. So to summarize, here is a diagrammatic representation uh, of the right heart pressures or Swan-Gans pressures. And here we have the right atrial pressure, which represents the A and C waves, which also corresponds to the right ventricular diastolic pressure. 
and that is followed by the right ventricular waveforms which represent the atrial kick followed by a rapid rise in the left ventricular systolic pressure followed by a rapid decline in the right ventricular pressure uh, after it reaches the diastolic phase we have the rapid ventricular filling followed by a diastasis so the cycle repeats similarly we have the pa pressure which uh, rises rapidly as the right ventricular pressure exceeds the pulmonary artery diastolic pressure then we have a, an arterial waveform which is uh, similar to the arterial waveform we see in the intensive care unit monitors and that is followed by this uh, pulmonary capillary wedge pressure which rep which is represented by the a and c waves and the mean pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is an indirect representation of the left atrial pressure in the absence of primary pulmonary hypertension and also note that the the mean wedge pressure is pretty close to the pulmonary and diastolic pressure except in patients with the primary pulmonary hypertension where the diastolic pressure may be much higher than the actual left atrial pressure. So this is in summary the Swangen's right heart catheter pressures and waveforms. Again ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for uh, watching this presentation and if you would like to if you would like to learn more about uh, other topics in cardiology uh, please do leave your comments below and please please do subscribe to our youtube channel and we will see you next time thank you so much i am dr nick nickam from houston texas